All right, I'm delighted to say Jamie Heaslip is joined us in studio. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying life. Enjoying life. It's uh, coming up on a month now since you announced your retirement. Yeah, yeah. It, it had your bucket list of things you wanted to take off very quickly? N- no, um, yeah, like, uh, I suppose w- when you're playing, you you think, oh, when I finish, I'll do this, this and this. But then, um, I, I don't know if it's because I had to f- retire due to injury or, or, or not, but uh, there's a lot of ad- admin to... Uh, finishing playing professionally um, there's a whole obviously business side to it mm. and all that other stuff so um, working my way through that first um, and then yeah look I'll, we'll, I'll try and get away uh, with uh, my missus I'll, I'll try and do a little trip myself and then um, yeah then we'll just kind of see where the cards fall after that Can you take us through the last year from warming up against England to arriving that moment of retirement and moments where maybe you thought you were going to get back, moments where you thought it was all coming to an end and then ultimately the decision. When did you first realise that this was far more serious than maybe anyone thought? Mm, Well, firstly, it's, I tell you what, it's it's been, it's been a roller coaster, if I to be honest. But, um, so when I'd say it was within about what, what the thing that first was worrying me was the reaction of a lot of people on how quick they decided that I needed an operation. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's always worrying when you just see doctors huddling in a corner. Um, and is this in the days after? Because what we had heard initially was you well, hurt your ankle. Well, look, Chinese with let's not get started on that because Chinese whispers and what other people. Uh, said in the media was grossly inaccurate and also uh, a little bit annoying to be honest in terms of what certain people were saying and um, thought it was some sort of conspiracy but anyway um, the serious matter was um, yeah look it became pretty serious for me in the next in the, in, the, in there was a reason why I pulled out of the game you know what I mean there was there was something seriously wrong I, I've, I've played games hurt I, think, I mean that's the nature of the sport I mean you're you're it's a contact sport. There's always a niggle somewhere, or an always sore somewhere, um, and sometimes you're, you know that's just kind of the nature of it. So um, the reason for me pulling out was you know because it was a pretty serious issue for me, where I didn't think I could something very unusual for me um, was happening, and I couldn't really th- you know I I, I was I, I couldn't perform. I knew I couldn't perform 100, percent and there was like it was funny when, when it happened. And I knew something was wrong. There was this, there was this brief, brief moment. It was like a devil on one shoulder, angel on the other. And it's like, uh, don't say anything. Say something. Don't say anything. You'd be grand. Get in. Just warm up. Get out. You know, first five minutes. Get another cap. You know, you're playing England at home. Yeah, I was like, come on, it's England. You'd be grand. You know, once you, the adrenaline kicks in, and it was like this. It seemed like it went on for an hour in my head, but it was like all of all of what like you know five ten seconds and then i was like oh, you're in trouble here so was it a totally <sighs> new injury nothing to do with pascal pape no 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 like you in the back yeah, like a lot of people run on the friday you're fine uh, yeah the whole week trained absolutely fine full minutes everything um uh like people have said the pape thing i was like the, the pape thing is like it's like it's like breaking a finger you know um it, you know the the type the type of 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 kind of break fracture I had off the back of that, you know, it's like it, it, it heals really quick. You know what I mean? It's not, it's nothing serious whatsoever. So people keep saying that to me, going, "It was that knee, wasn't it?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> nothing to do with that." Right. Um. So anyway, yeah. So it was about a week afterwards. I realised it was pretty serious. Um. I had to go in and have a uh, have an operation, and then um. You know, two weeks later, I realised how more serious uh, it was and I had a long road with that I had complications off the back of um, that surgery which um, you know we, we tried to we tried to avoid um, doing something more serious <clears throat> about it I was I think I was meant to return to play around August September um, I, I knew by June July that that was going to be a problem um, then we had to go back and we had to resolve that issue and um, and then start the whole process over again pretty much and, and see how it goes but you know come October I knew it was going to be tough 
to come back. But there was different points in the, you know, it was like, yeah, I'm coming back, I'm not coming back. Yeah, I'm coming back, I'm not coming back. And then... Is there always the possibility all the way through when you say, say a week afterwards, you're thinking about this operation and you're seeing the doctors huddling in the corner and having conversations and you're starting <laughs> to get... Like, at that stage, are people talking to you saying, no, no, like, this, I mean, this may be the end? No, not re- like... I won't get into the injury that I had, but the, but the type of injury that it is is there's there's stuff that you know it's a pretty serious injury and, and might not rectify itself or might. Um, some guys have come back, you know, from sometimes they've come back. Some guys haven't, depending on severity of the injuries and and there's a whole lot of different things that can go on, um, and then add in complications on top of that. Um, it just puts a different spin on it altogether. Um, but it, it was a bit of a roller coaster. Um, at times you think you're coming back, at times not. At times the odds were stacked against you. But I wanted to be able to say that I I threw everything at it um, to try and get back to playing professional rugby. And, you know, uh, Ireland were very good to give me the time. Leinster were unbelievable with um, their medical team, were unbelievable. The physios, the time they put in. Uh, between Gareth and Fergal and Leinster, who, who, like, God love Ferg. Ferg had to put up with me for a long, long time. Um, just one on one sessions, you know, just with rehab and prehab and all that sort of stuff. And, and, and then working around what, working around me in terms of trying to get me to that place that I, need, that I wanted mm. to get to. What's your mood like um, when that's going on? Uh, you know, uh, at times, no, actually, I was pretty cool. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't, Fired up, and it took me a bit of adjustment not to be. I, 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 the one thing I didn't want to do, I didn't want to be sitting in loads of team meetings and loads of team reviews when I knew that I wasn't going to be playing for a long time if I was going to play. And I just didn't want, like, I just wanted to get in, do my rehab, do that, get out. So I just, I, we kind of, I made a deal with Leo and and Stuart. I sat in basically on the on the team review on Mondays. Okay. And um, that was kind of that was that was it you know I just I, I needed a bit of headspace yeah, I, I did I, I, need headspace I think everyone clearly approaches that differently because we'd Luke Fitzgerald in here before and I think he maybe at times during his injury problems found himself a little bit isolated that there was too much time away from the camp yeah yeah I mean, I mean like it's your soul like, for a lot of guys it's it, that's your social circle that, mm. that group and, it, and you can feel isolated you know you're on a different timetable from all the lads you're not it's not around you're not you're not peaking or everything's not geared towards the weekend and the game at the weekend and but I kind of found you know enjoyment in the fact that I could plan my weekends um, and I could get away or you know I could I go out to Scaries a lot with my wife I go out there or you know I was able to plan my summer holidays for the first time in 14 years which was uh, nice um and stuff like that you know so what I mean in a weird way was it almost even though it's been a difficult year and a tough yeah. year did it end up in maybe a softer landing than it could have been yeah I, I, I've, I've tried to say that to people that it, like you kind of linger in the unknown a little bit um, which can be tough because you don't know if you're coming back you mm. don't know if you are and you're, you're trying to work your way through that journey but it you know I, I, example I went to um so when I, I dropped my post when it was Monday morning, whenever it was, um, I literally hopped on a flight and went to London. I literally like posted that, hopped in the car, went straight to the airport, and went to London for for like pretty much till Tuesday night just to get away. But I was over there and I, I was with um, Kevin McLaughlin and I was talking to him and he was saying, it, you know, it must be different because for him it was like, you're like, I mean, you know, the, the cold news comes to you like in a surgeon's office for most rugby players in this kind of uh, position. And for him, it was like, you know, I, I can't remember the time frame, but in essence, it was something along the lines of injured on a Saturday in the surgeon on a Monday. And he's like, you're done. For, for me, it was like, you know, it, it was a lot. I had a, a nine month process. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had time to get used to maybe not. It wasn't all of a sudden. It wasn't going cold, cold turkey straight away. Now, it's still tough because, you know, you have a lot of structure. You have, you know, Leinster give the lads, like take for Six Nations, the lads would have got a macro schedule for eight weeks. So they kind of know what's happening for the next eight weeks for them. In Leinster, they work to, you know, four weeks, uh, three, four weeks. And so you everything's... You really have to think for yourself a lot of the time. A lot of it's mapped out and thinking is removed for, for you. But, um... So you kind of get used to that. You get to manage your time. You know that, like I said, that change room that is your social environment. That's gone away now. Some guys, Leinster, were like, "Look, feel free to stay in here and and 
and kind of <laughs> weaned yourself off it almost like you know train away here blah 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 I was like no I, I when I made the call I was like I'm gone yeah I, I, don't, I can't I cleared out my locker and that'd be difficult coming in on Tuesday I'll spend a couple of hours in the gym while the lads are over there with a goal at the end of it where yeah. with the, just on there and I don't know how much goal setting you used to <laughs> but like for a lot of players and say for somebody like Sean O'Brien who's had a lot of injury problems the last few weeks when he's been really working yeah. his ass off in the gym I'm sure it's all with the goal of I'll play last Friday night and maybe just maybe Joel give me a chance on the bench mm. against England I was actually chatting to him literally while I was filling up my car coming in here <laughs> um, and yeah for him it's tough you know mm. he's had God, like, what, four years now of injuries for Shawnee? Like, he's, and, and even before he broke, I remember him, he broke in in what, like 2010 was his kind of breakout season, if I remember. Yeah. Maybe a bit earlier, but he'd like had a couple of injuries before that and then he had a, this period where like he's shown what the type of player he is because he had a run of games and, and right now I just feel for the guy, you know, but he's, he's really, like Sean he's happy go lucky as well you know what I mean um, but did you have o- over the last year had, had you moments where you said alright my goal is I'm going to play for Leinster by September no 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 I, 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 Internationals. I stopped being so goal focused probably back after 2011 World Cup ok um, because it just hurt so much losing in that quarter final I was like I, I can't deal with this I had to like deal with rugby in a different way um, was that the first time in your career that you ever had a goal that you didn't meet? Uh, oh no, I'd, I suppose I had goals that, like, I mean, geez, we can go back to, like, my very first goal I set as a professional was, like, start the first Leinster game, and I remember he started, we were playing Edinburgh away, and he started Eric Miller, and I remember he picked the team on a Tuesday or something, check it out, I went into him Tuesday afternoon to chat to him about it. And, like, you know, at that time when you're young, you're like, your hair gets up in the back of your neck, yeah. and you're like, you know what? Well, Fuck him, I'll show him. You know what I mean? Um, and so, like, I mean, I've had setbacks throughout my career. Um, but I don't know, it, it wasn't that. It was, it was more just, I don't know if the way or the manner or, or you know, whatever. 2011 just hurt so bad after that quarter final that, you know, I, actually, to be, I remember sitting in chamber room. I thought that was it. I'd never get another, I, I, knew, like, I knew, I thought I'd never get another pop at a World Cup. Because um, you just never know mm. with rugby. Um, so what did you do then? How, how did I, your I switched, mo- motivational I techniques switched, change? You know, a lot of it had to do with the way Joe Joe had come in in 2010, mm. and and he was kind of he was he was coming away from being quite goal focused, and and uh, he talks a lot about the outcome kind of looks after itself and being quite process focused, but then, you know, the process is 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 very much based on. Um, kind of like a set of values of how you want to be and, and how you want to be as a team or an individual and I found that worked way better for me because then it was it was a lot truer to like uh, be a good or bad I've always tried to be uh, myself and, and not um, not pander to uh, whatever audience is, is in front of me but you know to that's, that's worked well and a lot of times it hasn't worked too well for me um, but it's always been I've always been very happy that I've kind of stayed true to, to me so um, that's how I kind of I, I took what Joe said back in, in 2010, 2011 and kind of I flipped it on to how you how you how you acted and behave all based off that that's how you made your decision as opposed to it's all geared towards winning something it's it's more like I, I want to be this person and, and if I get the outcome I get the outcome great but if who not, initiated that did you initiate that like did you come away from the World Cup in 2011 and think I can't sit here and say my goal for the next four years is to win the 2015 <sighs> World Cup I can't well, sit here with this dream when I know that actually <laughs> things don't happen that easy I need to I find I say that somewhere. but I think in that summer I, I, I openly said we're going to we're, we're going to the competition to try and win mm. Um. Which I think, I mean, no ambition is not a bad thing. Um, you know, set, you know, aim high and see where you fall. You know what I mean? So you tried, but I, 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 I don't know. It just hurts. It hurts so much. And what Joe was talking about that season with Leinster made so much more sense to me. And I've kind of stuck to that ever since, to be honest. And and that just kind of fed my flywheel of 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 trying to be, you know. A, better person I suppose or better player and, and just get spinning spinning spinning, spinning yeah. go fast again just on that moment then of 
of realisation that actually it has come to an end. Where does that happen? Is that in the doctor's surgery? Is there one moment? Because I guess with a back yeah. injury, there's no real lifts or butts. There's no, listen, you can go out and you can try and <laughs> you can have two or three games back. It, it sounds like it's the type of injury that ultimately they just go, listen, oh, for your health, yeah. you can't take any risks with this. Kind of, kind of. You know what I mean? It's, you know, there's, you have a guy saying like, you're not playing, you know. It, you know, you boil it down to that, really, to be mm. honest. Um, you know, when you go against someone's decision like that, <laughs> you know, you, you'll you'll suffer the consequences. And you know, going into that meeting, that this is the I knew it was on the cards. Outcome. Yeah, like uh, you know, from uh, from back even in October when we had to restart again, we knew it was kind of against us. Um, and then it just kind of hit, I suppose, sticking points and just couldn't get past them, really. And, uh, like, I tried my best, you know, to, to do it. And I wanted to be able to say that, mm. you know what I mean? And, and I did and threw everything at it. And, look, it didn't work out. And, um, Were you devastated? Uh, on one hand, yes, because it's a big part of you. You know, mm. it's a big... A lot of people, you know, it's, a big, it's, it's what you do. I mean, I mean I've, been, I've been playing rugby since I was like with a team since I was eight um, my brother what we, it's what people I guess outside of your very close knit family and friends it's what people define you by um, yes people put that lab- people people love putting labels on people so yeah people would say Jamie he's a rugby player mm. yeah and, and that's look I get that that's fine I mean that's what I that's absolutely what I've done for like you said um since I don't know, since people would have known me, let's say in the public forum, you're right. Um, ironically, all my one of some of my best mates are the guys who I started playing rugby with at eight, and that's the one thing I do love about rugby. You make such uh, you good mates in it. But um, you play it for like I'm well, that's 26 years I've been playing it. I'm 34 now. Um, so on one hand, you're you're it's a big part of your life. Um, I wouldn't say rug- I am I'm anchored to rugby. Um, other people are, are I think are, mm. and that's fine. It's just I never. I never was, I suppose, in a weird way. I, I was all about being a, a, a good pro. And, and Well, that's the one thing that has come up that all your former teammates have said, the ultimate team player. With Bernard Driscoll in here a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and said, ultimate team player. You would stake your life on him when he's on the pitch. Yeah, and, and to be honest, you know, it was mad. So, like, I, I didn't really realise... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Not the fallout, but the feedback. Let's say you'd, or or the messages you'd get when you announce it. Mm. You know, um, it's not something I've done before. <laughs> um, and you know, other people like other people kind of ended. Like you, you look at iconic figures like Brian. You know what I mean? Now Brian got his last year was like Oof. you. You couldn't write. I it. went on. Yeah, you couldn't write, and then we we did slag him off about it. But like, you couldn't write it. You know, you, mm. you you win in France where it all started for him. Yeah, um, and we hadn't won there since that time that uh, where he got the hat trick. Um, you know, now he 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 went off early in the final last game with Leinster, but you know, it was a final. We won the final, and um, despite my crazy haircut, if you have those pictures. Um, you know, and, and you couldn't write it better. But and then he and he had like his his dinners, and and that was perfect. But then you see. So you kind of go, Brian's kind of on his own, right? But then, you, like, the way it ended for Paulie, always kind of... I was a bit gutted for Paulie, you know? No one really remembers him getting injured because it was literally before half-time. I don't even... I didn't even know he was injured until, like, about five minutes into the half-time meeting. Um, because we were all just coming off and he was yeah. there and I was like, whatever. You know, you just probably assume as well he's bulletproof. You see him go down, you assume he'll come up. Yeah, you're like, he'd be grand, yeah. Someone, oh, yeah, they're walking him in. Um and then it was like you know the you know he, he was he was in too long but we wasn't mm. playing and you know so I didn't really know what to expect and um, the one thing that just blew me away was was I always wanted to come into I always the guys you work with just like in any, like in any office um, you kind of you you know, the blokes you're around with hanging out with you're not going to please them all all right and you're not going to get on with everyone but the, the you know you want most people to say you were a good bloke mm. and especially I always say especially the younger guys because when I started out there were some older players who wouldn't really give time to the younger fellas and uh, wouldn't give give you time if you're in the academy um, and that was that they'd see you as a rival or they just couldn't be arsed maybe both um, it was a different time it was a different culture in the club mm. um, and you know I always I always made a big effort with some of the young fellas coming through and um, 
to you know to get on with them and, and make them pull them out of their shell a little bit you know what I mean and, and just break down any sort of boundaries or whatever limitations they thought were in place yeah. um, and it was nice you know uh, like people like Joey Carberry or, or you know uh, Ferris Luke McGrath or whoever you know kind of giving you a little shout out so it was, that was really that was really nice because at least you know the, the people who know you said you were a good skin or most of them did anyway <laughs> a letter from the president yeah that was cool man that was like, I got that, that yesterday cool. like that like not everybody gets that that Nobody was gets that when they retire <laughs> that was that was slick um yeah, I wrote a thank you card to him, asking him, "Can I come for coffee?" Because I have this thing. <laughs> I have this thing where I, and I hope he hears this. I have this thing where um, I like collecting uh, espresso cups from around the world, where of of places I go. Okay. And so I want to go to Ars. I've been to Ars but I want to go. I've never had an espresso cup before there because I'm pre- pretty sure they're branded. So I'm trying to see if El. Pres- pretty sure you're not allowed to take them home as well, though. Well, you never. I'm just asking the okay. El Presidente. Uh, can I come for tea? Can and I? Can I also take the cup home? Yeah. You're not looking for much, are right? <laughs> you? I'm not looking for much. Uh, no, but it was here. Look, it was, it was really cool, and as something that I actually said, that's something I'm going to frame. Yeah, um, that's it was that was pretty cool. Usually, only get a letter from the president if you turn a hundred. Yeah. Hey, hopefully, you, hopefully I get another when one when you can fully accept <laughs> it and appreciate it. Um, that was nice, and I got a text message off um, Leo Varadkar as well, which was pretty cool. Because um, I suppose I've 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 crossed paths with Leo. Or, uh, the T shock. Um, I call him Leo. Listen, if you're texting each other, you can call him Leo. <laughs> no, I sp- no, just because I, you know, he was minister of sport mm. a long time ago, and and we kind of crossed paths through different times, and then obviously he's T shock now, so um, he's the big boss now. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned there that you weren't anchored to the sport, mm. and that I think probably created some difficulties for you at times. Whereas, like, I was, I was looking earlier to see could I find a quote where you said you didn't watch rugby. But I have in my head that something along those lines was sort of out there around you that it was yeah. sort of taken that... It was taken, yeah, yeah. Is that something you would have said? Yeah, no, I did say it. Oh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, no, I said it. Um, I probably said it flippantly. Um, Why? Because I, 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 I didn't watch it. Um, Nothing? But no, no, no. See, I, they were like, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, so can't you're not remember, getting, I can't remember what the question was, but I, I was. it was about watching some game. I was like, oh, I don't watch rugby. Mm. And they're like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't watch it. And that was kind of it. But what I really meant was, uh, I, I don't watch it when I, and now I do, because I haven't been playing games. But um, when, when, I, when I played, I, I didn't watch it casually at the weekend or record games so uh, but I, I did a load of video work um, on our laptops you know we use sports code our trainings recorded uh, we get all the clippings of the opposition for you know preview review stuff of games as well and I had that all on my laptop and I'd mm. go home I I learned early on I just couldn't stand sit, sitting in the computer room um, afterwards after training or anything like that so I bought the software did it at home and, and and I put in the work, just away from it at home on the laptop. Was that with Leinster or with Ireland? With both. Okay. Both. It was really handy. So you just you know you you after training you go to video guys here when you get a chance where you stick a, the training session on that and you go home you watch training um, and you preview stuff for the next day and um, after games as well they usually have the rough cut of the games so I just get that off them. Um, and I usually watch the I'd, 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 most games I, unless we won something. Uh, I would have watched the game before, like if it was Ireland now, I would have watched it on the flight home from somewhere or th- that night usually because I can't sleep anyway. I usually, it's usually just my jo- myself and Joe Schmidt walking the uh, the corridors because neither of us sleep great after games, win or lose. So what you were saying was if you wake up at half eight on a Saturday morning, you're not turning on Sky Sports and watching Super 4. Yeah, yeah, but I, I said it in, in a, I suppose, a, a very young Jamie Heaslip flippant way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're quite an individual as well I get, I get the sense which is, <laughs> you're, you've been very nice to me here yeah no, but uh, what I mean is like right now we're, we're so with sport like teamwork and team ethic and being part of that team and everyone's sticking together yeah. whereas like there's not much space for being an individual and mm, did, see, I would argue against that okay I think you can but like it, the but, but no no not with the team no 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 but it don't get me wrong it's, it's you can be yourself like mm. um but you you are part of a team, so there is certain things that you got to give up, you got to sacrifice. Um, 
you know, but you can still be an individual and, and do your job. Um, you know, you just you just got to be able to do your job. I suppose is is um, and you gotta you want to want to buy into certain things as well. You know, you gotta buy want to buy into the team culture, team values, um, which I did. And to be honest, you know, there's certain points in my career where, um, you know, like th- take the captaincy. Uh, I was telling someone about this. They're like, were they big moments? And they were big moments. And and you know, I always say, you know, Joe Schmidt took the captaincy off me twice, essentially, <laughs> um, which are two big blows to take, you yeah. know. And but but the, the the overriding goal was always playing for the team and, and winning for the team. And and yeah, it hurt at the time, but the goal was always to you know do the jersey better. And the the, the jersey and the team mattered more to me than than my own individual success or nominating for this or it is still a or, blow though, or, this guy liking me or something yeah. you know what I mean I, I cared more about the team success rather than and uh, than anything else you know what I mean but you could still be yourself in that like I was you know social media I leaned into that pretty mm-hmm. hard I liked that uh, I had outside interests and um, that was both for me personally to have balance and also to have a bit of a mix yeah um, oh, what, what, do, do, don't be tapping they get very upset <laughs> if you're tapping uh, the white boots was that part of your uh, yeah well that, that was look that's been a lingering thing from the Eddie era yeah yeah. I've been told that you'll, you you uh, been told that you won't play internationals wearing white boots and hence why I always tried to wear white boots after that were those words actually yes. used 100% and how did you respond the, the, I like wore if you actually coach. if you actually look at the the boots I think I wore that day or the Adidas ones and they were like black but they had like a white trim going down the middle so I, I kind of settled in the middle but then I just said no I'm never settling I'm never letting that being the thing that tips you to play or mm. not play because I thought it was just so nothing you know what I mean did you have it out with him did I have it out with him regarding white boots yeah. No, I, I mean, it was the first time I was in the camp. Like, I mean, he, the, Eddie didn't remember my name the first time. He called me Graham three times in a row after I corrected him. Right. So that was a difficult relationship then. Did you ever get over it? <laughs> um, no, I always say, look, he was the head coach, you know? He had to make his decisions. Mm. And head coaches make tough decisions all the time. And, he, you know, he brought Ireland to a really successful place. Um did I agree with him? No, but like, not every player is going to agree with the coach and the decisions they make, obviously, especially if you're not getting picked. Yeah. Um, but you just kind of, at that point, like, they're critical points. You, you, you got to ask yourself, are you going to make it? You're not going to make it? Do you want to be a guy that kind of doesn't make it um, and just plays club rugby or not? Or, you know, what's what's the overriding goal? And, and you know, I had, I, 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 you know, I had to kind of back myself that I would eventually make it. I had to make a decision then. But that period of of 06 to 08 was very like I don't know if I'm I'm going to make it there was a lot of doubt in there and that's why I always it always kind of fed into making sure you had some sort I'm not saying it's the master plan but some sort of plan outside of rugby because that was a bit of a point where I didn't know if you said in college that's which it. way it was going to go um, well I'd finished college before I started yeah. rugby but I was doing a master's I started a master's in I, off the back of all that I think I started a Masters in 07 actually yeah alright because I would have always sort of assumed that you are nominated for Junior World Player of the Year yeah. in was it 04 you yeah. make your debut for Ireland in 06 last game of Lansdowne Road Pacific Islands granted you don't make the squad for the World Cup in 07 mm. but that you're very much up and coming young player firmly established you're going places yeah. you know what the wise man would say that but when you're young and you're you're in immature, the middle of it. you're in the middle of it. You're like, you, you know, you're very, you're in your lane, and you're kind of focused on the end goal. You have the blinkers on you, but um, you know, at the time, I was looking at the players that were ahead of me, or or were in that World Cup squad ahead of me, and you know, uh, it was tough for me to agree with the decisions that were being made. But look, there were decisions that were made, and you played a hand. Like Michael Checa at that time was amazing. He was amazing, and so like players, like it's funny the players you remember. Like when I didn't make that squad, he had. I remember hopping the car straight away and driving down to uh, uh, to Nice, and like Checa ringing me, you know, and and Malo Kelly ringing me actually, you know, and you remember that, and you kind of remember those guys. Dars actually got in touch with me, you know. You kind of remember those elder guys at the time reaching out for you, uh, and kind of. I don't know, giving you a little pep talk, I suppose. Yeah. But, you know, um, yeah, you look, you just, you, it's all part of learning how to deal with those, because um, like, it's like winning and losing a game. you got to learn how to deal with the success and the failure. It's almost I mean? if more difficult, though, I think, when, with a coach that maybe you don't see eye to eye with, because 
there's always another game. You're heading into an 07 World Cup. Nobody, there's high expectations at the time. Clearly, it ends up being a disaster. But like Eddie O'Sullivan could have been in charge for the next three, four years. Yeah, exactly. And, and you don't know. You don't know. And that's why I have to think of the bigger picture. Will mm. I make it? Won't I make it? Um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double down on myself here and, and go for it and, and, and say that, like, I gave my all. I mean, I remember in, when, when Brad Thorne came back, it was in our club, and he came in in January 2011, I believe. No, he was in there just after the World Cup, wasn't it? Yeah. And, you know, he was like, you know, you can have a grand old career or you can have a great career. You know what I mean? Which one do you want? Like, mm. Which one do you want to have? Um, so when did you go from having a grand old career to having a great career? When, oh, no, I, I decided to kind of... I, I probably decided I was going to try and give it my all even more so than what I thought I was giving it around that time that kind of 06 to 08 period of like is this going to work is it not going to work for me um, and look you know the things things kind of picked up after that and went well and, and you know I you know I was, I was lucky to be part of some amazing teams and some like in the back row some amazing like David Wallace like taught me a lot um, and was so good to me I had Keith Gleeson before that and Lancer who Keith Gleeson was a serious pro and um, you know it, it, it was I, I was really lucky to have some, some some class players around me you know even when I was in the Ireland squad and not playing yeah um, I mean you had Simon Easterby was there uh, you had Axel who was there you know you had Wally who was there Gleeson these got learning off those guys was you know that, that was I suppose it was your apprenticeship as well and and you know, you can either have a no, I'll prove them wrong attitude or oh, I'm going to learn attitude. And I try to learn. I try to learn. I mean, I try to take the feedback as positively as yeah. I could. Like, looking back now, did Eddie have some sort of a point like the white boots? Was there a flashiness there when you were when you were that age? Like you're saying, I don't you look back and you, you started working your ass off and I'm thinking then you're talking about going into Cheka when you don't get that start for Leinster. You go in on the Tuesday and you have the word that there's something maybe in you two years later that wasn't there. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think white boots or the colour of boots define a player. Um, I, I could be wrong. No, I don't um, think so. No, no. Um, you know, and Eddie gave me his feedback. I asked for his feedback after the World Cup when he didn't, sorry, asked for his feedback when he didn't pick me. Um, he said I, uh, I wasn't big enough, strong enough or fast enough, I think were his three things. <laughs> so, um, and Where do you fine. go from there? Well, look, you know, you, you you try and knuckle down and work on that. And look, he's like, sorry, I mean, I don't mean to be bagging him, but like, coaches make tough decisions. I'm sure there's a lot of players that mm. like don't agree with Joe's selection or or um, Leo's selection or Cheka's selection or whoever. You know, that's 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 sport. You know, there's only 15 guys you can take the field. You know, you're probably lucky then the way that you end up working with two coaches in Cheka and Schmidt, who maybe in very different ways can get the very best out of you. The Cheka personality wise seem to understand something yeah. within you and bring you to a next level and then Joe the sort of discipline he expects which again even though people pick up on lines like oh, I don't want to rugby matches it, it seems you have this incredible discipline to go and work your ass yeah. off and I've not, I'm not afraid of hard work I always want to be the hardest worker in the mm. room um, and that's tough in answer because there's a lot of good hard workers and, and same in Ireland um, but yeah Czech was great like Czech did so much to change that club like like I don't think he gets half credit that he should. Um, he he really changed the direction, the culture of that club, and then Joe came in and built on top of that. And they, and Joe built you know a mm. pretty serious thing on top of that. And he's done so with Ireland as well, because um, Decky did a lot with changing the Irish identity um, or the Irish co- the team culture. You know what I mean? It's probably a better way of putting it. Um, but look, it was uh, yeah. I mean, I I love working with Cheka. I actually met him recently. I met him down in. I went down to the, se- the Dubai Sevens and I met him there. So because um, he was there, he was I was stopping off on the way home from uh, the November series. Okay, yeah. He was in great spirits. Um, and Joe, look, Joe is hilarious. Like I've had, I think Joe has been my coach since 2010. You know, and and I have a very good relationship with Joe, and he he kind of let me be me as long as. You know, I, I I I I knew my stuff, and and Joe was like that. I mean, if you know your stuff and and you're you're in shape and you and, and you know your job and you you execute it, you know, uh, in training and when you need to, you mean he kind of leaves you be, I suppose. Um, if you put the work in and you're and you're disciplined and you and you live to the values of of that mm. environment that you've all agreed, you know, he's he's pretty fair with with that, and um, 
you know, he's got again, you know, like every coach, he's got to make some tough calls, and and sometimes people agree, sometimes don't. You know, Stuart Lancaster is another one who's who's been a. I, I it's funny. I bumped into him yesterday, and whereas uh, you know, two of us. We've been talking afterwards. It was just like we, I, I kind of said, and he said, you know, it's a shame that we didn't get to work more yeah. with each other because um, I really enjoyed working with him for a time, and I think he's he's uh, you know he's up there with Joe in my in my books in terms of of coaching and culture and and style and everything, you know. It ended up being a great career. You won everything except for the World Cup, essentially. Three Heineken Cup titles, three Pro 12 titles, a Challenge Cup, three Six Nations, two Triple Crowns, the Grand Slam. There were individual nominations, even right up to being nominated for World Player of the Year in 2016. And so you're, by then, you're in the next World Cup cycle. You're thinking about yeah. 2019. But, but just looking back over all that, was, was there one moment, is there one night that stands out? Like, is it Cardiff? Well, funny enough, Cardiff is a place where so much of my rugby memories come from. Um, I won a Grand Slam there, um, won a Heineken Cup there. Like that was, in Leinster, that's probably one of my, my favourite moments yeah. ever. Um, for loads of different reasons. But, and mainly because uh, some of my family members were, were getting a lot of nasty enough abuse coming into half time from really? fans yeah but by the end of that game they were qu- pretty quiet I think <laughs> uh, which was kind of nice say, a yeah. nice moment to hear um, and also the way this change room the huddle on the pitch afterwards uh, um, but with Ireland it, for me personally it's, it's it was it was Chicago that you know even more so than the Grand Slam look the Grand Slam was amazing like amazing Um and I hope the guys do it. I, I'm, I'm hoping the guys do it this weekend, um, because I just, I, it's amazing. But, but I, I, I think that was the ninth or tenth time I'd played. I, ha- I have to look back on this. It was the ninth or tenth time I played New Zealand, and I was just like, at that stage in my career, you yeah. know what I mean. By the World Cup, it's like I haven't beat these guys. But we've beaten everyone else. I was like, I haven't beaten these guys. <laughs> And the, and the manner of, of how it happened on the night as well. Yeah, with the look, they're, injuries. At, they're at the top of the to- totem pole, and, and and you know, I remember there's I have a picture, um, and it's myself and Church, and we're sitting on top of the hotel, and we're just you know, it's a good moment, um, especially because of the journey with the lads that were there, and Mick Carney as well. Uh, had a kind of yeah, had a little moment with him, I suppose, on the field afterwards, because um, he'd kind of gone through it as well. So. But like, there's so many, man. It's like to me, like the journey's just been that part of my life. That journey has been amazing, you know, mm. and, and um, yeah, pretty cool. As well, with uh, one of the low points, I'm sure was the red card against. New Zealand. <laughs> it wasn't one like, of my highlights, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> did that play into that? This, like, I guess since maybe with your dad been in the army, that like discipline is such an important thing oh, for you. For yeah. for a moment like that down in New Zealand to get the red card is that a moment you look back on now and like is what's what's the emotion that you think about when you uh, I was like oh shit what did I just do um, again a very reactionary type of thing mm. um, but I remember that week we're all like excuse me we went down there and we're like you know Rich McCaw if you get in if you're 10 metres from the line he'll kill the ball if you have the momentum he'll kill the ball he'll kill the ball and I played enough a couple of times to know that mm. and, and look, he was he was an unbelievable seven and blessed in the dark arts uh, of sevens and he'll uh, kill the ball and he'll get away with it you know he sometimes he turn over balls you know he just he just had ways of of controlling the game mm. right and um, I remember you know in the review that's like you know just you know if you see him around the rook if we have the momentum you know just just get him out of there and. I think it's in the first 15... Yeah, it is. I think it was a 14, 15 minute I got uh, right carded. But we, we get a lot of momentum and like it starts off, I think, from just outside the, the 10 meter, their 10 meter line. We make all this momentum, momentum, momentum. And we kind of come around the corner. We're beating around the corner, beating around the corner. And we're just the other side of the post. And I see him coming over the top of the rock. And he's on it. And I was like... And I hit him. Couldn't get him off it. And I was just I just lashed out. And... Um, like Keen Healy's leg actually saved me because he got in the way then as well. Um, but yeah, it was a silly mistake. It was a stupid. It was a very childish thing to do. Who's the and most difficult conversation with then? Is it like is it your teammates? Is no, it with the I mean staff? Is it with everyone. Your family. Everyone came in. I said nothing. I had to sit in the sideline obviously because you're not allowed. So I sat in the sideline for the whole game. 
gutted because you know playing New Zealand with 15 players is tough enough uh, 14 is tough it's, I think at one stage the game went down to 13 people each mm. side because of yellow cards and stuff anyway um, look I was the first one to stand up when, when you know, like anything um, you gotta you gotta you know you gotta own your mistakes and um, came in the change room afterwards put my hand up straight away owned it um, and you know that was that uh, and you moved on you mentioned a lot of the tributes that have been coming through over the last couple of weeks and really good to be able to hear these nice things said about you. Uh, <laughs> it's very rare to hear you guys say nice things about what? me. What? No, I'm only messing. I'm only no, messing. no, no, no. <laughs> Listen, we, we rated every performance <laughs> as it happened. Go on, anyway, go on. Go Wait, on. How, do you, how do you want people to remember your career? What, what's, what's the... What's the I, that, for me, personally, I, 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 um, I, I don't... This is going to sound weird. I don't... I want the jersey to be remembered more and the jersey's going to last a lot longer than, than any player, any individual. And no player owns the jersey. You get a chance to wear it for a day and then you see what happens. So all I ever wanted to do, look, w- once you get playing rugby as a career, like that's the boyhood dream come true. And then once you get, you get to play for Leinster, you get to play for Ireland. I, I distinctly remember being like playing like under 10s for Nace having a my, my I don't know how my brothers did it they robbed the ball from that Australia semi-final game back in 94 91 91 was it 91 the one that was in Lansdowne yeah yeah somehow they got one of the balls from there right and I had it when I was young <laughs> and uh, me thinking I was Simon Gage and running around my house so like when you when you get to play you, you fulfil boyhood dreams is that what you're thinking then when you're finishing that try against Italy like, <laughs> yeah I've done this before. <laughs> this, this is all is part a, of the this plan. This is how it always played out. <laughs> I just need longer, blonder hair like Simon <laughs> Gagan and a massive jersey. Um, but look, it was, it, yeah, I, you know, after a while, when, when, you know, I was very lucky to, to, to be part of teams that were successful and then, and then you kind of think of the bigger picture, you want, you want to, you want that jersey to, to, you want, to, you want to try and create a, a legacy, I suppose, for the jersey. Not yourself, but for the jersey. And I've always tried to leave that jersey in a better place. Mm. And that's what kind of drove me for a lot of those years with, with trying to be a good pro and, and try to set a standard and, and set a good example. And, and I wasn't one for, for, for big inspirational talks or anything like that. I, I was more of a, a, a kind of an action guy. You know what I mean? I think you probably achieved that because everything that's going to be asked over the next couple of years about the number eight jersey is who's going to fill Jamie Heaslip's boots I looked I mean number eight wise like back row wise we are so lucky in this country like right now you've got you know CJ's doing unbelievably well there for Ireland I mean in Leinster you've got uh, Jack and Max um, two unbelievable players uh, you know back row in general you've got like Dan Levy you got Sean O'Brien you got Reese Ruddock you know, uh, you got Pete. Yeah, you got Jordy, uh, who I was delighted to see back in the back in the group. Um, you know, we're very lucky uh, with the back rows that we have. I think they're going to be in, in great place. Um, you know, and those guys are, are driven. Um, they're they're driven, and, and I think they're going to see the reward of putting the work in. And this Six Nations has, sh- has shown that. I mean, they've stuck to their plan. They stuck to the way they want to play. Um, they've been really, really clinical um, and smart. And um, you know, I think they're, they're it, you know, it's kind of kind of like I talk about that flywheel. It's going to feed that flywheel even more. I th- I think anyway. Yeah. Um, and they want to do more. They want to get better. And and that's great, considering that there's a World Cup in what sixteen months time. All our rugby coverage here on Off the Ball is with thanks to Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. We all belong to the team of us. Jim Heaslip is with me in studio this evening. I, I do want to touch on the game tomorrow and Ireland going for a Grand Slam. You're going to Twickenham. It's going to be your first time actually going to an Ireland game, which would be quite a strange experience, I would say. Here are my tickets, yeah. Yeah, I'm going. You don't want to flog them off? You don't want... You- <laughs> You go to do the nice thing and maybe um, give them away as a, a prize to our listeners. No, I haven't been to a game. Um, <laughs> You've been to Leinster games. Like what's, uh, sorry, I've been to Leinster what, games. What's, yeah, and, yeah. and it took me a while to go to the Leinster game. I don't think I, I didn't go until the semi final against Scarlets. Yeah. How do you think you'll feel? Or was that the final even? Uh, no, semi final. Right, I know uh, you, you've got to say here tonight they go win the Grand Slam. Oh, how do I think the they'll, championship. they'll do? No, how, how do you think you will feel watching on oh, in the it's stand? Mad. It's mad. It's mad feeling. Um, like is there a bit of jealousy? No, it's not. It's not jealousy because uh, you want the lads to win, right? Because you know the blokes, and, mm. and you want you want the blokes separate from, let's say, the Ireland team. You want your mates 
one of them do well, right? But then it's really weird. I was, I was, talking, to, <laughs> I was talking to Stuart about this because um, uh, he's not going to the game in, in Twickenham. And he says he hasn't been to a game in Twickenham in a long time. I don't think he, I, probably, I don't think he's been since. Uh, I wouldn't blame him. Yeah, right. And it was really weird. I was saying it's so you want the lads to do well, but then like your your little ego kind of devil over here kind of talks going like you know they're doing well without you, <laughs> you know, and you're kind of like oh man. But then you're like, no, I mean, you just park that. And you're like, no, you're wasting 30 years time when you're still only, you know, we're the living Grand Slam winners. <laughs> yeah, no, like, lads. you want the last two. And it was like talking to some of the players during the week and, you know, they they're, they want to, some of them, like, I mean, it's only Rory and, and Rob who have, who have had it. Mm. And, and those lads want, they want a Grand Slam and I want to afford them and I want them to be successful. And it was great to see that they're not just satisfied with a championship. Um, that's great to see. That's the standard that we're at now. You know what I mean? And um, that we're not afraid to go after that. Um, you know, I'm sure they'll be playing it down, and 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 that's they've got to do that for their own mindset coming into it. But um, it's yeah, it's weird. But I I've, I've done I I haven't been I've been at the grounds, can do one or two kind of corporate things beforehand, but I haven't stayed to watch an Ireland game yet. Right, so you've actually been in the stadium the day I've of the been, game. And I've left. been yeah twice. <laughs> so you've obviously thought about it then that actually it is going to be maybe a little bit difficult, a little bit weird, maybe somewhat it's, emotional it's, it's, even it's during weird. the anthem. It's weird. Yeah, the, I, like, I, 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 st- I stayed for uh, uh, the anthems on Saturday <clears throat> and I left just afterwards. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was just weird having that flip because I always like... I didn't, why didn't you want to... So you stayed even for the anthems yeah. for the game against... And, and you let... Like, why? And I said, no, I'm gone. I'm gone. It was too weird for me. I don't know why. I don't know why. It was just, it was just, it was just too weird for me. Uh, so I just went up to the pub and watched it. And I went home. Now those tickets are priceless at this stage. No, no, I'm You're not going now. to go to the game I'm tomorrow. Going. I'm going. Listen to I'm the going. anthems and go, actually, I'm out of here. No, no, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I want to see the lads lift the trophy. Have you been to Carton House? No. No, I haven't been out there, no. Carton House just means work in our head. <laughs> it's a beautiful hotel, a beautiful hotel, and the, and the staff are amazing to us, and the setup is class. But like for I don't know how long we've been out there, but that just means work. You're in a difficult <laughs> position probably for the next couple of years in terms of punditry and analysing yeah. because like they are your mates, a lot of them, and you've played with so many yeah. of them. But when you look at the way Ireland have gone through this, and it has like it's strange. It was sort of muted after you left uh, last Saturday. Ireland have all but won the championship, having got yeah. another a third bonus point win in the row because. As I put it, I think we've all been schmitified that we've had this expectation Ooh. level has been raised to such an extent that really it's Grand Slam or nothing. Like The cycle that this Ireland team are in, do you feel Schmidt has them exactly where he wants them in terms of game plan, in terms of style? 16 oh, they're months definitely, out? They're definitely... Well, sorry, they're not definitely. I, I, it looks like they are playing to a you know a certain game plan, all right, and that wouldn't surprise me. Um... Yeah, but they, they, you know, they've got to approach it with a certain mindset. You can't, you know, you, nothing's, nothing's a given in sport. Mm. You know that. You've been covering it long enough. So, I mean, England um, were in Ireland's position this time last year. And look what happened. And they kind of ruined, Ireland ruined the day on them. Um, you know, that's probably the only silver line on the day for me, <laughs> watching England lose. Um, but, yeah, it, look, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a weird one. But that, look, the, they set their own standard internally, and and you know they want to chase that. And and look, they've done. They've they've won another championship. I mean, what's that? That in Joe's Joe came in with Ireland in two thousand thirteen. That's yeah, it's three now. It's, it's three. Yeah, I know it's three for Joe. I'm just trying to think of the time period. You know what I mean? But like, you know, I, I know in the past there was there was talk of the golden era being over for Irish rugby. But I mean, it's great to see uh, this squad. I think I I think this squad is probably one of the best. Assemble squads Ireland have had in a long in a long time. Um, you know, we I've been part of some really good squads, mm. but I think this squad is really you know they're in a that's the current squad I suppose. It's only they're in they're in a really good spot, and um, I I you know I hope they do it. I'm I'm a fan now. You know what I mean? And pundit, it was funny. Uh, one of the, I won't say who it was. One last like you're going to be a pundit now, and I was like, ah, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'll see. I'm not committing to anything right now, and this is the first media thing I've done since retiring because I just to be honest I wanted to just get away from it give myself headspace be a fan let the lads do their thing mm. you know and watch them do their thing and be a fan of it um, I don't know what I'll do uh, in, in that arena but I'll always be I've always tried to be honest so I would always try and continue to be honest what if you were there and if you were 
say taking over the captaincy for tomorrow's game and you're going into mm. a grand slam like what do you want as players heading into like everybody knows the importance do you need the big speeches do you need the Paul O'Connell moment before you're going out on the pitch no, or do you I, need I, to be I think those, analytical and, and calm Paulie, Paulie would probably say to himself that those kind of moments of trying to get people emotionally charged they're gone a few years now because if you're not there already get out of the change room to mm. be honest Um but then you have you do have people like Paulie who can just like set a room on fire with with his talks. But um, I don't know. I, I you know again, it, it's all about the different styles. And our change room and our, our leadership group were always a blend of different styles. And and some people are good at other things, you know. And and you know, I I tend to be quite matter of fact in terms of what I would say. You know, this is what we're focusing on. I know during the week they probably. You know that's that's probably how they approached it. It's like okay, here are, here are opportunities. These are the, this is the game plan. These are the moves that we're going to be using. Let's map all that out. This is their threats. Let's set up our defense for that. I mean, control that, control. That, that's what they got to focus on. You can't worry about the rest. You know what I mean? Um, what did you judge your game? What was the one stat when you came in? You looked at that you thought, yeah, had a good game. I no, I didn't work like that. Um, I I. I wouldn't mark myself out of ten. Like what goes down, and, and and you know, and I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too concerned about. I I'd always be like, okay, what did we do well? What do, I, I try and I try and analyze the game in terms of you know what we did well and what we can improve on. Mm. Um, and sometimes you know that was easier to do when you won, and sometimes it was hard to do when you won because you would you would you have to stop yourself papering over any cracks. Because uh, that's what you can do when you're winning. But then also when you lose, you can't go too far either. You know, I always say you, 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 the pendulum swings, you know, and you just don't try and swing to an extreme either end. You just try and keep it in the middle, you know, and with some of the losses, okay, try and boil it down. And, and, jo- and you know, Joe and Leo um, are really, really good at that, of, of going, you know, you might have lost the game, let's say, for whatever reason, and, and you could have been beaten by 10, 14 points or, you know, but actually, what 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 led to that? You know, was it something very simple? Was it some basic? You know, was it something out of nowhere, or is it a breakdown in the system? And and so you just try and stay in the middle. You know what I mean? And and again, I I I don't I didn't. Um, you know, I'm a fan. I probably will. Um, I'll be listening to off the ball. <laughs> uh, no, but I I, I didn't I didn't le- um, read or listen to the media around it. Uh, and I said that, which probably didn't go down too well, but I, what I meant was, because um, the only person's opinion that matters at the end of the day is the coach. And he's the guy who picks the team, which I learned very early on in my career, despite what you think or what, you, you know what I mean? He's the person who picks the team. So it's all about, okay, how, what what they are seeing and what they can improve. So, you know, the feedback loop you get off your coaches, your you know your head coach, your forwards coach, your backs, your backs coach, even if you're a back row, because you got to know how to play with them. Skills coach, scrum coach, um, all that stuff. You know, and that constant feedback loop that there, that's the kind of the circle that you would be looking for your feedback of those pluses and minuses from the game. And sometimes you got the outcome you wanted, which is a win, and sometimes you didn't. And you know, you just you always say there was a there was another game until there's no more. We might <laughs> leave it at that, I think. <laughs> no. uh, Ireland going to do it? Are they going to do it? I think so. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen what the bookies and all them are saying. My gut says, yeah. I, I, you know, ever since Johnny smashed that drop goal after God knows how many phases. 41. 41. Um, it, it, it showed a real good like resilience because that game wasn't pretty. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ireland weren't that great in that game. They didn't really create a whole lot of opportunity. France scored a try pretty easily, in my opinion. Ireland didn't really threaten a whole lot. But to show that resilience to go the way they did, you know, to go forward, to take the drop, like, whatever the drop goal, the drop goal was like, as balls of steel by Johnny, he stepped up and, you know, he misses that, he gets slated, Mm. but he nails it, right? And he missed one earlier in the game and he nails it, fair play to him. But like no one goes on about like the drop goal, Hendy getting that drop goal, the crossfield kick, or else he getting that, and the balls to go for that drop goal, drop goal, uh, that crossfield kick, um, the plays by the lads just to keep like that would have been energy sapping, 
energy sapping and for them to get to work themselves into that and you could see them working you could see it working themselves into the middle field and getting down and, and staying in the middle channel do, um, do you watch it so as part of maybe going tomorrow to the game but bits you've seen of Ireland so far as you're watching them you go ah yeah I know what they're doing there I know what they're doing there there's certain things that I know that they're doing yeah I won't say what they are but I yeah I'm, yeah just because I've been, I played in Joe's system for so long. You didn't and sell the secrets to Stuart Lancaster, <laughs> did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. Joe, Stuart's all. I'm trying to get him an Ireland jersey and see if he'll wear one. But uh, he's actually, you know, talking to Stuart is really funny because he's been blown away by the the culture over here around the game and, mm. and how, like, with the club, like, in, you know, in Munster, most of the players are from Munster, and Leinster, most of the players are from Leinster, and same with all the clubs. And he was just like, man, this is mad. And then when you get when Ireland roll into town it's like another level and I was like yeah just wait till you see you now in, in like in, in Twick and Richmond will be taken over but yeah. um, sorry I think they're going to do it and, and ever since that moment I was like "There's this team is they're in a good place they're in a really good place and it's all about momentum and Six Nations and they just they were they never got taught you know I was openly saying Grand Slam on, on social media but I can't because I'm not playing you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean but the lads were like no they're next game yeah. next game next game next game next game and and um, I think they can do it and I hope they do it I want to be there seeing them lift a trophy I want to be able to congratulate my mates on doing an unbelievable gig yeah you might get a night out with them they might let you in well I, I did I text <laughs> I text Joe after uh, when was it Saturday and I was like look if you're looking for a water boy uh, <laughs> just let There's me know There's a medal in that isn't there <laughs> I was like is there anything in there yeah yeah I still um, have the suit I can come he, around Saturday night he said I was overqualified to be a water boy but um, I don't know I've, I've asked I, I actually the Barbarians is the only team I never got to play for that I really would have loved to play for oh uh, yeah and I said I'd be a water boy for them if there was an opportunity so um, I'm trying to Upscale myself, so water boys. Right, well. The water boys, the goal for me right now. Here, listen, it's something uh, you, you, you can move back into that goal mindset again. Now you've retired and set yourself some lofty ones like that. Uh, you've been brilliant with your time, Jamie. There's actually loads more stuff that I would love to have got to, but we might do that again uh, yeah. over the coming months yeah. because yeah. Uh, hopefully we get another chance well, to you chat need, to you. you enjoy. Need, you need to you need to get that average age of your uh, panel down, so maybe I can get involved. Oh, oh. What? Who who was that? It, who, who do you want to, is that a personal dig at, at Brian O'Driscoll is that a dig at, at Keith Wood who's, who, who's, that, who's that aimed at no one I'm only taking the mic uh, great stuff Jamie as I said all our rugby coverage here on Off The Ball is with thanks to Vodafone official sponsors of the Irish rugby team we all belong to the team of us